dentistry is a highly uh, stressful profession. So you have to be able also to balance it with uh, investing on your mental health, investing on your mental well-being with things that better prepare you for the highly stressful days. Hello, Patrice Rati. I'm Jazz Galati, and welcome to another episode of the Patrice Dental Podcast. Today is going to be really monumental. We're talking about stress. This is an episode I hope will change your life. Let's face it, guys, we're part of a really stressful profession. The thing that really brings it home to me is that actually every profession can be difficult. Like even ask the guy who works at McDonald's, he will tell you his job is stressful, right? Or ask the hairdresser when she's got a long queue of customers and the, she's got a really picky client who she's cutting hair for, then she will tell you that, oh my goodness, this is a lot of stress. My profession is the most stressful. So everyone has a, a, a case and an argument for their profession being the most stressful. So in dentistry, are we really such a stressful profession? Well, I think so. Let me tell you why, right? I listened to a, a podcast episode uh, who my good friend Payman Langrudi and Prav Solanke run Dental Leaders Podcast, which by the way, I was on recently. So if you haven't checked that one out, do check it out. Uh, and he had someone called Tom Youngs, who was a dentist, uh, not even just a dentist, a phenomenal dentist, like a really amazing uh, clinician who posted lots of YouTube videos, uh, lots of great clinical cases. And you think, wow, what a great dentist. But then he left our profession. He started to work for a, I believe it was a, a startup, like a tech startup. Uh, and then he had a few years with them and he's, uh, I believe he's moved on perhaps from there. I'm trying to remember that podcast episode I listened to, but the long and short of it is that he has been a dentist and he's experienced lots of other sort of professions as well. And then on the podcast, he says that dentistry is by far the most stressful profession. So that's one example I can give you about, uh, but you don't need to know that, right? You don't, you don't need me to convince you that our job is super stressful. Let's face it, right? As Lincoln Harris said in many episodes ago on the podcast that we're a surgical specialty and really it should take about 11 or 12 years to train us like in, in the medical fields, but we only get you know, four, five, six years of dental school and we come out of dental school with um, not so much confidence and not so much experience. So we're kind of learning on the job as you go along, it's the truth, uh, and it can lead to very stressful moments in our career. So that's why I got Dr. Manuela Rodriguez, who is known as the Mindful Dentist or Mindful.Dentistry, uh, and she will be answering some very real world tangible questions because I'm kind of a really impatient person. I didn't want to do the whole, look, I'm the worst person to do like the headspace and the mindfulness and stuff. Like ask my wife, we've tried it and I'm like, okay, I'm bored. I want to do, I want something more exciting, right? So I really, really, really twisted Manuela's arm and I said, okay, can we make this extremely uh, clinically valuable as best as she can rather than, and I mean, no offense to her or anyone in that space, like I don't want wishy-washy, right? So I think what she managed to do on this episode is absolutely phenomenal. So Manuela, thanks so much for what you did. And guys, I'm so excited for you to, to listen. We basically cover three main areas. Area number one is day-to-day -day clinical struggles, clinical failure, um, and struggling with your dentistry or having difficult patients or difficult cases and how that can bring on stress and how we can manage that. The second one is, is a darker one, is litigation, right? Some of us, many of us have had complaints against us and that can be such a dark and stressful period of our lives. It leads to sleepless nights uh, and it's a really nasty thing to experience. I wouldn't wish it upon even my uh, greatest enemy, to be honest with you. So therefore I want to really get her insights into how she can help you. If you're struggling with a complaint or a near miss uh, and you're losing sleep because of it, what can we learn? What can she teach us about being mindful that could help us to, to better cope with our emotions and, and actually have a more fulfilling, less stressful life. And number three is one that really bothers me a lot, which is running late, okay? I am guilty of being that dentist that does kind of run late time to time. So I just wanted to ask her at the end about, okay, what advice can she give me as someone who can have the tendency to run late so that I can better control my emotions and not be so stressed when it happens? So I hope I gain a lot from this episode. So I hope you do as well. If you listen all the way to the end, Manuela has got a discount code for you. This is not like a sponsored episode or anything, but she was very kind afterwards to email me and say, you know what, Jazz, for the Patrice Rati, uh, she has an, an offering, like a journey she can take you through to uh, through mindful dentistry, and she wants to pass on a discount to you. I was like, that's very kind of you. So I can pass that on to you at the end, so you have to listen all the way to the end for that. But before we get there, I have my Protrusive Dental Pearl for you. This is a really great pearl. I actually really love this one. It's gonna go in my like top five pearls, right? Get this, okay? 
in dentistry, one of the most stressful things, which is like the theme of this podcast episode, is how every sort of clinician, every mentor you experience, or every course you go on, they all have differing and sometimes annoyingly opposing schools of thought. Like one person will say um, vertical preparations are terrible, vertical preps are dirty preps, don't do them, they're going to invade the biological width. Whereas other dentists be like vertical preps are the most conservative way to treat a tooth, etc, etc. I don't know if that was a good example or not. Or some people will say this is the correct way to do this um, implant technique or the others will say no that's completely wrong and, and none more so than in the world of occlusion and splints and that kind of stuff. So uh, especially in splints and occlusion actually. So it can get really annoying as someone who just wants to learn and do the best for their patient. So I came across um, a comment on Facebook that I just had to pause and reflect on how powerful this comment was. It's by a, a, my friend Alan Matthews, who's based in Scotland, and he had this to say, right? It was like some argument, everyone was like giving their different viewpoints, uh, and he, this is the way he summarized it. He said, listen to everyone, listen to all the schools of thoughts, right? So listen to everyone, but do what feels right to you. Now, this is such a simple one, but such a powerful one. I, I thought of, felt like a massive load lifted off my shoulders when I, when I read that. I'm going to just accept that it's the beauty of dentistry, that there are so many different opinions. And I will listen to you. I will listen to everyone, no matter how wacky or uh, how boring it is. I will listen to all the schools of thoughts, but I will always do what feels right to me. And that's why I condone for you the Pratusharati as well. I think it's such a great way to live your professional career. Listen to everyone, respect everyone, but do what feels right to you. So I hope you enjoy that, Pearl. I love that, Pearl. Alan, thanks so much for inspiring me with that. So uh, let's join in, uh, hopefully, what will be a um, career-changing episode for you guys. Enjoy. Manuela Rodriguez, welcome to Petrusa Dental Podcast. How are you? Thank you. Thank you, Jess. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm doing well. Amazing. And you are known as um, the mindful, I guess, the mindful dentist in a way. Your Instagram handle, mm -hmm. mindful.dentistry. It's uh, it, it's great what you're, what you're doing and the messages you're putting out. And really, mindfulness has become a bit of a, a buzzword. Right? It's become yeah. uh, over the last... Uh, probably about six years ago, I came across it. So I want let's let's the, speak to the listeners and tell them what was your journey with mindfulness. What is mindfulness for about the three or four people who, who are listening and don't know what it is? I I, I don't know how you could possibly uh, avoid it, but uh, for those that don't know, tell us what it is. And then how did you get involved? Mm -hmm. So uh, my journey with mindfulness started um, more or less 10, 12 years ago. Uh, because I, uh, 12 years ago, I had a, a health problem. I had a Cushing uh, syndrome, so I had one mm. adrenal removed. And so my body was uh, producing 10 times more cortisol than needed. So after the, the surgery, after the treatment, I thought to myself, okay, maybe I need to change something in my, in my life also. So I discover mindfulness. I discover uh, meditation also, and I and I started to 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 use it um, as a way to to reduce stress in my in my own uh, life. So this the mind mindfulness is this um, this uh, presence that you bring to to not only to your life but actually to everything that you that you are doing right so you uh you become aware and present um moment to to moment um and and i started uh to apply it also in my in my dentistry uh practice uh so i i, I graduated from dental school in 2001 mm -hmm. so uh and uh, I realized uh, that um, I was w during work. I was overthinking a lot. So instead of being totally there with my with my uh, patient working, my mind was running around and sometimes uh, worrying about less um, good outcomes of the treatment that I was uh, performing. And I realized also that led me to work from a place of insecurity. Um, so I starting to, uh, to, 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 to bring this, uh, conscience presence to my, to my daily work. But what actually, uh, was decisive for me was that, um, in 2014, I, I started working in Belgium and, mm -hmm. uh, and I attended a workshop that they have, 
um, that is specific. It's, it's like mindfulness in the, in the, in the dental practice. So it's one day workshop. It's, and it, it teaches you how to, how to apply it. And, and that really. That, that was specific to dentistry. Yeah. That was specific to dent dentistry. And it's something that dentists here in Belgium, uh, it's, it's part of their, uh, uh on, ongoing, um, uh, education. So if you want to take that, that's, uh, you, you, you can have that. Wow. Um, so even yeah. like as part of a recognized part of the sort of yeah. uh, mm -hmm. learning for dentists mm -hmm. is that that's pretty mm -hmm. spectacular. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, and in the end, because I already had my mindfulness uh, practice, I, I talked to the person that was, uh, giving the, um, the, the course. And, and I said, this, this is so interesting because I, I already started to apply mindfulness, but I now realize that I could go even further. And, and we, we, we continued to talk and, um, and I realized, yeah, maybe I can, really start going deeper on, on, on this. And I started to apply it. And then, uh, in 2016, I started my teacher's training as a mindfulness based stress reduction, uh, instructor, teacher. And it took me about two years to get the, the certification. And, 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 and even during my, my, my certification, I, I started to working with colleagues and I started to, to, uh, uh, to explain this to, to colleagues. And I had amazing feedback. And, and at a certain, and when I finished my, uh, my, my certification, I, I started to organizing the, the mindfulness based stress reduction courses for dentists because I, I could apply all the program due to my experience as a dentist. I could bring the, the, to every session, the, the dentistry practice into it with practical uh, examples, of course. And, 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 um, I, I, I had, and I have, um, very good, very good feedback and very good, uh, results. And at a certain point in the end of the, in, in 2018, I decided, okay, this is, uh, I'm dividing my attention and my time between these two things. Uh, what am I going to do? And, and I decided to, to pause my clinical, uh, mm. practice and to dedicate myself, uh, full time to, to this project that is mindful dentistry. Well, uh, congratulations for, for making such a, a monumental decision and something that obviously sounds like a bit of a passion. How you got involved sounds good. And, and really nowadays, there's mindfulness from what I've read and my experiences in, in every facet of life. Like, for example, there's mindful eating, right? I've come yeah. across that before. Uh, and now we're talking about mindfulness in dentistry. So I'm hoping it's going to open a lot of people's eyes because when I started speaking to you on Instagram, I thought, how can we make this, for the Petru Serrati listening, uh, a valuable episode but really clinically relevant day to day so mm -hmm. how can we make it i mean i think clinical is maybe a strong word but the real life scenarios that we mm -hmm. face as dentists and if you can give us from you know all the courses and the teaching that you do i'm sure you can share with us how to manage the following three scenarios uh so i'm going to share those th scenarios with you all so people can can follow along with the three things we're going to talk about we're going to talk about one technical failure so you know as dentists we're perfectionists um we beat ourselves up like for example i beat myself up when i'm doing a restoration class two and i have an open contact at the end right honestly mm -hmm. uh, i i hate that the worst i've probably ever felt is when something's gone wrong like a perforation uh i've never extracted the wrong tooth but i can imagine something like that happens mm -hmm. like errors in, in in practice or or even technical difficulties that can really stress me out so i want to know what manuela what you think about how we can better manage that using mindfulness. That's scenario mm -hmm. number one. Uh, I mean, I, I, the, the example I wrote is mm -hmm. that I once got a splint stuck in someone's mouth. I was making a direct uh, chair side splint and I got it stuck in the mouth. And I can tell you later how I handled it. And I'm proud of myself the way I handled it. But I want to know what to do when you're actually in that very stressful mm -hmm. situation. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. uh, scenario number one. Yeah. Scenario number two is a very dark one, right? And something that, especially in the UK with the, the litigation, I'm, I'm assuming the US as well, litigation rates are high. So what if you have a patient complaint and you're battling that? I know dentists who have sleepless nights, right? I myself have had sleepless nights in my career and I know I will do in the future. Hopefully not after today. But um, but this is, this is a real reality of dentists. So a, a litigation scenario. And the third one, last one is, thing I hate the most thing I experienced with you today. I do apologize. I, I was running late for today's, uh, today's show, right? I am stressed when I run late. I hate, absolutely hate running late because then the next patient can sense it. And then uh, you're trying to uh, not rush dentistry because 
good dentistry happens slowly. I do believe that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are three scenarios we'll talk about today. Before we get onto that, I want to just check with you something. If I was to boil down the definition of mindfulness as me, okay, what I've come across is savoring the moment. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is that, is that a good way to explain mindfulness? Speaking uh, in the dentistry context, because that's what I teach and that's where we are talking uh, here specifically. Mm. It made me, uh, made that definition that you just said a little bit more co complete, you know. For me, mindfulness, I talk about presence. I talk about, uh, not only savoring the, the, the moment, but I talk about, uh, experiencing the moment with presence, with awareness. I talk about awareness and that's very, and that's what, uh, we are going to 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 talk about uh, uh, later, but um, uh, dentistry uh, is actually um, if you look at it, if you have you have disappointments uh, with challenging work, sometimes with anxious patients, uh, it's hard. It's hard work. It's hard to keep your focus. Huh? So it's not easy, and. Uh, you are under mental strain, you are uh, under fatigue sometimes, and you have challenges that may, might come up that we are going to talk, to talk about later. So um, when I talk about mindfulness, a mindful dentist, I talk about presence. I talk about uh, awareness uh, in the moment to be able to maintain the, that presence and to be able to work from that place of presence. Uh, so to illustrate this a little bit more with the practical example is if sure. you are working uh, with your patient, right, seated on your chair working and you are done, you are doing this feeling that you already did like uh, a million times. Right. And your head might uh, want to space out because you have other things, uh, a lot of other things in, on your mind. OK, so usually you, what's for lunch? No. If you do that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, food is in my mind a lot of <laughs> so I know what you mean. But if we do that, and if that becomes a habit, then you are missing on the big details on your work. Huh? You are missing on uh, the subtle messages that your patient might be giving you that he's starting to feel uncomfortable. You are missing the the microanatomy that make, make, might make all the difference. You, and what who knows what else might you be missing? Okay, so um, there, it's very easy to do that. So uh, when I talk about mindfulness in dentistry, I talk uh, about more than just savoring the moment. I talk about presence and bringing this awareness to your daily work and to into what you are doing. Right. Well, uh, I, I, I like the way you explain that. And sometimes I enter a state of flow. Um, you know, uh, Mahail, Mahail Shineski, the, the chap who came up with a theory of flow. Uh, and would you say that is um, similar? Am I down the right avenue? Because sometimes I'm doing three hours with one patient and it feels like five minutes. Uh, and I'm, I feel good and I feel like I've enjoyed myself. Um, how can you relate that, the theory of flow, to uh, mindfulness and dentistry? Because what I'm there is I'm, I'm, I'm in love with every small details. Is that, is that something that you can relate to? Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. When you are uh, in the moment, when you are aware of what you're doing, when you are grounded with, your, grounded with yourself, when you have this mind-body connection, uh, then you enter in the state of flow and that allows you also to enjoy and savor the, the, the moment. So that, that's exactly, uh, that's awesome. The same, well, I like uh, that very much. Then. Amazing. Well, let's, let's tackle that first scenario then. So technical failure. Okay. Uh, let's say we're struggling. Let's make it really tangible. Let's say, uh, I am a dentist who, uh, on a given day is struggling with an extraction. Okay. This lower molar is taking so much time. I've raised a flap. I've sectioned it. I'm now still trying to use some cries or something, trying to lift this root up, but it's just not budging. The patient is um, is breathing heavier, is obviously annoyed. Your nurse is um, looking stressed. You are getting stressed. What lessons can you teach us 
to handle this scenario in an optimum way. Yeah. Uh, let me just do a small disclaimer before we, we start, uh, just to, to say that it's not realistic or even desirable, the concept of a stress-free dentistry uh, work practice, I mean, or, or a stress-free dentist. The stress is always going to be a natural part of dentistry work and it's going to, to, to happen. What we're going to talk uh, about here is, um, practical ways, of course, of dealing with that, with, with that stress. So going back to the, to the, to the practical, uh, scenario that you j just, uh, just, just proposed. When we find ourselves uh, when a situation where the procedure is not going uh, as we planned uh, and we start to struggle, uh, normally we we react. So we're trying to solve the situation. We are going to we're trying to solve the problems because we we need to move uh, to move forward. Um, so what happens is that we, when we work uh, in stress, we disconnect. We disconnect from our from our body, and we are just inside of our head, uh, trying to to solve the problem. And our vision narrows. So our vision narrows. Our critical thinking narrows. Our creativity disappears uh, completely. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes instead of solving the problem, we can even make the situation uh, worse <laughs> uh, because what we are doing, it's, it's not solving uh, the problem and we are not paying attention to the details. We're not paying attention to the, to the, to the big picture uh, also. So the first Is that step, because of the state of panic? Yes, uh, it's because we take our brain take us as a, as a threat. So we have to, uh, to, to, we are being threatened and we have to, to, to react, to find solutions. Uh, so the first step here, it's not action, but awareness. We go back to awareness. So awareness of what's going on. And we actually need to pause for a few seconds or a few seconds to one minute. You don't need much more time than that. We need to recognize the situation. We need to recognize our body tension. We need to look up. We need to take four or five big inhales and long exhales, and we need to ground ourselves again in our body again. So to... How can you explain that to a patient? Because I want to make it really tangible. Like, I, I, I can imagine myself, and I really try to imagine myself mm -hmm. in a situation. And it, the advice seems sound. You're right. Our creativity is gone. You can't think mm -hmm. on the spot. You're yeah. panic. You're not thinking right, right? Mm -hmm. But then if I suddenly say, okay, let me pause, yeah. deep breaths, is you know I, I don't want the patient to think that oh my gosh the dentist is now having a breakdown or something. So mm -hmm. so how can we? Is it just okay to say to the patient you know what I'm a I, I like to practice mindfulness. I'm just going to regroup myself. Is that uh, would that be appropriate thing to do? Mm -hmm. If you uh, it, it depends with the person that you have uh, seated and in, in, uh, uh, in in front of you. Uh, of course, if you feel comfortable. You can say that, but this is not something that yeah. you're going to uh, be even needed to, to explain. Uh, what I mean is you just need from a few seconds to one minute. So if you don't want to explain it, you don't have to explain it. Okay. You just need this pause to look up. Do uh, an intentional uh, relaxation of some key points. Put your shoulders down, relaxing your belly, your face, your jaw. So bring this intentional releasing and do uh, two or three deep uh, uh, breaths and, and continue working from this place of groundness, from this place of opening, because this immediately, this gentle awareness that you bring to your body, it, um, it immediately, uh, releases your, your critical thinking, your creativity, your flow. Okay. So, uh, if you don't want to explain, you don't have to, if you think, mm -hmm. okay, this is going to be weird especially when you are not used to do it when you're not used to do it you're but when you start being used to do it you see that you don't have to to explain and and the patient doesn't find it weird because you're not actually doing some not anything weird mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. in the beginning if you feel that need then yeah you can say okay i just need a few seconds 
to because I'm tired. I mean, this is long appointments. These mm-hmm. are uh, appointments with stress, with with uh, fatigue, like I just said. So it's normal if you need just a few seconds to just look up. Okay, let's get back to it. It's simple as that. So, so uh, you know that I can make that makes sense to regain your creativity. Uh, mm-hmm. is, would you say that's the 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 thing that we we sometimes skip because when we're panicking with the situation, we're just digging, digging, digging to actually pause to do you know, almost like a power pose or relaxation and 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 get your sort of uh, regroup. Yeah, that's that's what you're saying. Yeah, because this allows you to return to that uh, presence that I was uh, talking about. So, mm-hmm. and, and this allows you to continue working from that place of presence instead from a place of mindless reaction. Okay. So, uh, and well, when, when this natural releasing happens, this opens, this opens not only your body, but also your mind, your critical thinking, your creativity, your ability to collaborate and to problem solving. Okay, so learning to 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 release your tensions through this intentional relaxation is an important skill and can be learned, it can be developed, and it brings your full intelligence and creativity back in the game. I definitely think okay. that would that would be more useful to be able to plan because in that situation you need to have a plan. Okay, now I'm going to do this, this, and this, and communicate that to your nurse and be like, okay, we're now going to try this. If that doesn't work, we'll have the plan B, and then we have plan C, and then you, hopefully you execute your suture in, in that specific type of scenario. So definitely to be able to think clearly and to show the patient that you can communicate clearly as well, not just gibberish when you're panicking, you're flustered, you're sweating. So uh, totally, that's good. Before we move to the next scenario, did you have any more gems with that? Yeah, the the just to 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 make the technique practical that it's actually mm. you have to be able to recognize that you need the pause you have to be able to pause because this is sometimes the part that i that i find it's most difficult for 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 dentists to do because they're trying to solve the problem and they think that the pause is not going to, just going to 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 lead them to wasting time and it's actually the other way around so you recognize you become aware of the situation you pause you bring this conscience relaxation into your body you ground yourself again you take a deep breath and you continue working from this place of of groundness so this is the actual uh, technique and just uh, to take things a little bit further uh, because dentistry is a profession that creates many triggers just so what happens after that extraction that didn't go according to plan right so you ha- you had the scenario that you just uh, uh, talked about and mm-hmm, of course mm-hmm. after that you are late Right, you are running late yep. because it didn't go according to plan, and Absolutely. M- and maybe after you have an anxious patient, and maybe after you have your assistant uh, entering the 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 your your room saying, oh, the the lab would just call saying that important that important work that you have for tomorrow, they are not going to be able to to deliver it in time, so we have to cancel the patient. So <laughs> we this spend, is every day. This is everyday stuff. Yeah, this is yeah. real world stuff. That's it. So we spend our day in fight flight mode. It's like tense, right? And it's one trigger after another trigger, right? So, um, and there's, there's this quote, uh, 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 from David Allen, I, uh, your ability to generate power is directly proportional to your ability to relax. So Mm -hmm. we have to be able to be aware of all these triggers, of all these stresses. Otherwise, we spend our life, our day just reacting to whatever is happening and sometimes in automatic uh, pilot. Um, And I'm sure you you already worked or you you know someone that uh, clearly carries a lot of, you know, a lot of tension (laughs) in the shoulders and the face and... Um, and he, he, we notice how this, how this, uh, tension is holding this person from expressing all his creativity, from enjoying, uh, his work. So when we spend our days in the, with this overstimulation, there will be this constant flow of cortisol in our bloodstream. There is, there will be a constant, uh, muscle uh, tension. And, and of course, if this becomes chronic, then you have the physical, uh, problems. It starts, 
to have the, the, the physical stress symptoms. So high blood pressure, insomnias, uh, you know, of heart diseases or gastric uh, problems. And, and sometimes even emotional, uh, burnout. Uh, we all have different ways, of course, of, of coping with, with, with stress. And, um, and to be, being able to recognize, uh, the stress triggers and how to manage all of this. Uh, and how to bring this, this relaxation, uh, can balance the, the, the stress physiology. Uh, so what I wanted to, 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 uh, distinguish here is the first part is how to deal in the face of stress in a situation just like we just said. So to be able to mm-hmm. pause, to be able to recognize and to be able to uh, bring the, the presence again and to work from a place of groundness. And then you have the second level of coping uh, with, with, with stress because dentistry is a highly uh, stressful profession. So you have to be able also to balance it with uh, investing on your mental health, investing on your mental well-being with things that better prepare you for the highly stressful days. So if you develop, you know, hobbies that bring you joy, if you learn to play an instrument, if you, uh, start, um, uh, if you learn breathing exercises or start a meditation practice or whatever, or uh, exercise practice, whatever works for you, but to be able to compensate. Otherwise, if you develop maladapting coping uh, um, behaviors, for example, addictions or um, or uh, compensations or uh, emotion, you can develop, can lead to emotional burnout. What you're actually doing is that you are even adding more stress to your to your already stressful uh, day due to your to your job. So this is very, very, very important to be able to bring relaxation, not only in the face of stress, but also then to your life to be able to compensate, to bring balance to the, to, to that part. So there's two different levels that are important. So we, we talked there about in the moment, you know, to uh, practice those uh, awareness and relaxation mm-hmm. techniques, whether your, um, you know, your crown's missing from the lab, whether your, uh, the root mm-hmm. has fractured, whether the tuberosity has come away or whatever's happened, but to manage that. But then also outside your life. And that reminds me very much of uh, my old principal who used to tell me that we spend so much money on equipment. We spend so much money on softwares for the practice, but we actually need to invest in ourselves. So but like you yeah. said, whether being mental health, physical health, and, and that's because we are we are like equipment ourselves in a way yeah. that we need to keep us keep ourselves well oiled. So and I also read once that for every clinical course you do, do a non-clinical course. So that could be communication or, or like something that you offer, for example, mindfulness, yeah. which I think is, is is great that you're doing that. Uh but you mentioned a key point about the toll it takes on your body. And that leads nicely uh, about if, if the situation becomes chronic, right? Because the second scenario is litigation. So this is Mm -hmm. very much not in the dental chair, but this is something that you take home to your husband, to your wife, to Mm -hmm. your family, um, to, 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 to bed, you take it to bed with you and you lose sleep over it. Yeah. What can you share with, unfortunately, hundreds and thousands of dentists who may be experiencing sleepless nights at any one point because of a burden that they carry, probably related to litigation uh, mm-hmm. or a complaint or unmet expectations or, or, or just negative emotions, mm-hmm. staff issues at work, whatever it could be. What do we uh, do then when it becomes chronic? Yeah. F- uh, first, it's uh, important to understand the difference between um, what we just talked about, which is... Uh, something that our brain perceives as, as a threat. So like a, a fear, so like an, an immediate danger. So when we are in our daily situations and to, uh, and to worrying. So worrying, um, it, it usually means anxiety. So, um, it usually, it's the state that arise in, um, when we are anticipating uh, a threat, right? So the, perf- the perception that things might, might go wrong. 
Um, so uh, the, the first scenario that we just talked about relates to the immediate danger and and the second scenario, worry, uh, uh, relates with anxiety and comes from a, a possibility of a future uh, threat. Uh, yep. So they are not the same, uh, but they have the same physiological response. And, and this response can cause emotional and physical damage, like, just like, like, like you said. It can cause the physical, uh, parts, like, like insomnia, so like not being able to, to sleep at night. And of course, the emotional part, it can lead to emotional, uh, burnout. Um, and, and sometimes this anxiety becomes chronic. So it's a chronic, uh, uh, problem. And, and there's actually uh, studies that show that anxiety, uh, sometimes anxiety patients can can even become addicted to their anxiety thoughts, even without realizing. So it's like a mind body uh, looping uh, system. So you are worrying about something that that's happening or something that might uh, happening that it's not good uh, in in the future, and of course uh, that brings uh, anxiety and um, and not just thoughts about what can go wrong, but anxiety on your body as as well, mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. The more this happens, I mean, the physical uh, feelings can generate more anxiety thoughts. And our brain again takes this as a danger and it reacts in a, in a, in a physical, in a physical way. So the, the key point in what the practical thing is here, how do, can we, uh, relieve or how can we stop this anxiety? Mm-hmm. And it, mm-hmm. it comes down to developing also three, uh, skills, uh, that you might think as a three steps, uh, process. So, First, to become mindful of the, of the thoughts, of the, the anxious thoughts. Uh, the second one, to be able to uh, drop into our body and become mindful of the physical sensations of our experience. Uh, because usually uh, anxiety thoughts have a physical reflection or it's uh, this knot in your stomach or is this constriction mm, in your mm-hmm. throat, whatever it is. Sweating or. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It has, it has a physical, uh, expression always. And, and the third step is to actually to offer yourself, uh, some, uh, words of, of comfort or of care. And that's, and that has the ability to calm down your inner critic. Um, so, uh, but, but we can take this, uh, with a, a little bit further with, with, with your example in, in the practical way. Okay. So imagine that in this case of, of litigation, uh, so usually, of course, our mind starts racing with, with worries, fear, and the possibility of all the scenarios that can happen. So the familiar knot in the stomach starts to, to, to appear or, or either that is all the constriction in the throat or either that is the, the, the sweating, uh, palms. Um, but you have the, the, the physical part. Now, absolutely. Where, where do you go from here? So you have two options. The first one is to go on the, on the habitual, uh, road of uh, the, your mind running free, not aware that that will lead you to, uh, even, uh, a more, uh, spiral down, downward of thoughts and of physical sensations. And, uh, of course, your brain takes your physical sensations as threat. So it reacts on that and it's like a circle. And the other approach is to actually apply mindfulness and, uh, which allows you to interrupt the, this sequence m- much sooner be- before it had, gets a hold, uh, on you and you can break the cycle. Okay. So how do you do this? Again, mm. with, with awareness. Okay. So you develop, uh, awareness of thoughts. Actually, when your mind is running free to that path, you become aware. This is a skill and it can be de- developed, but you become aware that you are having all these thoughts that are making you anxious and that your 
it's reflecting on, on your body. Okay. So when the body holds to stressful thoughts, it tension immediately increases, uh, due to, to, to cortisol and hormones like we already, uh, talked about. And that's why we cannot sleep at night. And that's why, uh, we are in this, uh, this, uh, circle that we cannot, uh, get away of. So if we become aware that we have these thoughts, we can interrupt, interrupt them. And by doing that, uh, we can, uh, after b- uh, becoming aware and after, uh, interrupting them, we can offer ourselves the word of, okay, everything is okay. You don't have to deal with this. Now you can calm and, and this is not something that you need to be worrying about now. And this has also, it can be developed with the second technique, which is, uh, you have the situation, you have the practical situation, right? So you are mm-hmm. worrying about a patient that might sue you. So my question that might is, sue you or, or yeah. an ongoing complaint. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but that ongoing complaint or that might, that, uh, uh, litigation problem has, uh, a cause. So what is the actual cause? Imagine that is like, uh, I don't know, uh, an endo treatment that, uh, failed and that you need to extract the tooth and the patient doesn't accept or doesn't understand that. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that is the primary event. And that is the, the primary situation. Okay. And then you have a secondary situation, which is your mind racing with thoughts. Okay. He's going to sue me. Do I need a lawyer? Should I get a lawyer? Am I going to have money to pay for the lawyer? Uh, how am I going to do this? I know I should not have done this. Why did the end of the, so do you understand? So an actually, Big uh, time. uh, yeah, an actually, uh, uh, practical exercise is to distinguish from the primary situation. So what actually is going on from the secondary situation? That is your mind bringing all the extra suffering to the situation. Okay. So, and my advice is to focus on the primary situation, to see the situation as it is and not as you wish it to be. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's, it's like, like this Mark Twain phrase. I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. Mm-hmm. So, it, it's you know? the same way as saying worrying achieves nothing, but steals the, steals the happiness of today. I don't know who said that uh, as well, but that's one of my yeah. uh, quotes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But attention, I mean, uh, anxiety and worries actually ser- serves us because it has a purpose, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's intelligence and it's uh, what differentiates us from, 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 from other animals, for example, right? Mm-hmm. The ability to what we are doing when we are worrying is bringing this ability to, to anticipate you know, what's ahead. So the problem is that when we get hooked, on worrying thoughts, right? And, and they take over us. Okay, so when we let this thoughts, uh, get the stronghold on us, then that's, that's the problem, right? But so by reducing, uh, our, our anxiety, by reducing our uh, anxiety thoughts, this does not prevent us, of course, from using our intelligence and from anticipating and looking, f- uh, to the future in order to be able to anticipate, uh, things to better deal, uh, with things. Uh, but um, the fact that you are being mindful to what is happening in your head, the, the fact that you are being mindful of, of this worry thoughts will help you to distinguish which of these thoughts are actually useful for you and which ones are just bringing noise to your mind and, uh, and that are totally unnecessary. Okay. So, uh, this will also ease your, your self, your self doubt. And by, uh, and, and the last part is, is to bring this, this, this word of comfort to yourself. And this is just recognizing, uh, also the good. I mean, uh, it's not about positive thinking. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, of course, recognizing what's happening and if what's happening is not good. 
it's it's uh, we have to be able to to do it to find solutions of course and to and to be able also to learn from failure because mm-hmm. when we fail we have to learn something from it this but, is when we grow as clinicians i I, yeah. you know, I find the more i fail the more i learn the less failures i have yeah. so so failure is inevitable uh, in clinical dentistry uh so yeah. you, you're, you're totally right there and it's just how you take it on the chin and grow from it really Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, if we we also bring this um, this intention of recognizing the positive, because we all have uh, positive and negative things on our everyday dentistry practice, and we as humans have uh, negativity bias. So if th- something goes wrong in that day, that's what you will remember in the end of the day. And that's what you keep on overthinking. So to be able to bring this recognition also to the positive is, uh, it helps to balance the inner critic, right? So if you uh, start overthinking and start worrying about the specific thing, to be able to, to bring balance and to say, yeah, but then I had... Um, many patients today that actually are satisfied. All the materials worked well today. Everything went smooth. I didn't uh, run late. So to be able to also acknowledge the the positive brings balance to our inner critic and calms our our inner critic. That's a, a that's brilliant. And my 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 favorite takeaway. I mean, it's all the lovely things you're saying. My favorite takeaway I, uh, that that of what you said was separating the event from your uh, feelings and and thoughts. I, I found that very powerful. So I'm now uh, imagining myself to the last time I had a phase of sleepless nights and worrying and whatnot, which often is for, for you know ends up being for no reason usually. Uh, and I'm and I'm thinking, hey. It was, uh, you know, let's make it up. Let's say it was a perforation incident. And then me thinking, oh, my goodness, uh, the patient must hate me. Uh, what's going to happen next? You know, we'll have to prepare for the GDC, getting sued and stuff. Uh, whereas actually, if I saw it as an event and then focus on the positive and negative and, and the learning and reflection. So, so that would have definitely have helped me. So if anyone out there is, unfortunately, going through this tough phase, you have to separate the actual event that well, I like the a beautiful way you put it, the primary event to your thoughts. Uh, and, and so that's a real a gem from, I, I found actually, and actually it's, it's, it's not, it's not funny, but it's, it's in a way like every time a, a nurse or receptionist has me paperwork, the rule is that they have to say, don't worry, you're not being sued. Then they have to hand me the paperwork. Uh, so it's, it's a little thing that we have actually, and I, I, I'm comfortable with that. So it's, it's one of those things. Um, right. Well, the, the last question I think you covered it a little bit already is mm-hmm. I hate running late. Like for me, I had a great day at work today. I had an awesome day because everything was on time and, and that's me in a happy place. And no matter what you do, we will always run late in clinical dentistry. It's inevitable. So what advice can you give for, mm-hmm. for situations like this where you're, where you're running late? Not in terms of, hey, you know, you should do an audit and figure out why you're running late. Because that's, that's, of course, it, that's a given. But how can we manage our the way we talk to ourselves, the way that our emotions are running and those of our team in mm-hmm. the day-to-day struggles of running late? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to actually tell you, start by telling you a story of a colleague, um, that attended, uh, my, my, uh, stress reduction course not so long ago. So we are, he had already contacted me uh, last year in the beginning of uh, 2019, but due, to, yeah, due to time, he could not find the time to, to do the course. So now due to the, to the, to the pandemic, uh, context and, uh, he, uh, found the time and, and he did, uh, the course, but it was interesting because he did the course after the lockdown. So he was already, uh, go, uh, back to work. And, uh, during the middle of the course, he just said to me, look, uh, Onala, my, the big part of, of stress in my daily practice is gone. It's gone because due to, due to the, the, the COVID protocol, I now have longer appointments mm-hmm. and less, uh, <laughs> patients. This so, is me. This, I, I totally feel less stressed now because every, all these fallow times, uh, I, I catch up with my notes and I, I, I have a coffee. Um, this is me. You've you just described me and I, I didn't even think about it that way. You're right. That's exactly what he said. He said, I don't run around anymore like uh, like uh, a fool trying to do everything. I don't multitask anymore. So um, a big, big 90% of my stress is gone. And so I asked him, uh, okay, so if 
everything goes back to normal if the before protocol is installed again. I said, you, and he didn't even let me finish. He said, no, no way. You don't get me there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, and then I asked, but okay, so before who, who, what was the problem? And she had said, yeah, but I really didn't thought that I could uh, do less patients. I really thought I need to have this number of patients. And, and now that I do it, I see that things run smoothly and, and the income is, uh, doesn't make the difference for the quality that I have, uh, in my, in my, uh, day of work. So of course the first advice, and we're not going through that, but the first advice is actually to, you have to be able to look really objectively in the way that you are running your agenda and you have mm -hmm. to of course weigh in the the everything because if you of course if you are if you have appointments every every half an hour you are going to 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 be late you are not going to have time to talk to your patient or to listen to your patient the proper way so and you are going to have chronic stress due to being late Okay. And that mm -hmm. can be handled. But of course, even if you are managing your agenda, uh, in, in the right way and you have the perfect, uh, flow of patients, situations might happen and you are, you, you see yourself running late. So what, what to do? You have to be able to first accept the situation you use the word that i hate i hate okay when you hate you usually what you do is that i don't want this this is happening mm -hmm. and you start re reacting and working from this place of okay i have to solve this or maybe you start working faster again if you do that you miss the details not mm -hmm. only of your own cues of your body, but also from the patient, also from the attention that you might be paying that, that, that attention to your work, to the detail, you're not going to, to have it. So the first is, okay, I'm late. This is what it is. So again, see the situation as it is and not as you wish it to be. That's a, mm -hmm. a, a, an important, an important one. Um, mm -hmm. from that moment. And if you, if we go back again and if you, uh, ground yourself again, again, pausing, bringing the awareness to the situation, trying to relax your body, uh, and continue working from this place again of, of, of groundness and continue to do your work, completely focus in what you're doing in order to deliver your best, uh, to what you are doing. Okay. Once you finish that patient, then you deal with the, with the next situation. So dentists are not good in multitasking. That's not a, a good thing. So perform one activity um, from the beginning through the middle and to the end before you beginning another. Okay. And mm -hmm, truly mm -hmm. engage with how you are spending your energy. So this is the most important thing. Okay. Um, because if you are late and if you are working from that re re reactive place and your mind is already thinking, okay, I'm going to be late. I'm not, I have already the other one uh, waiting today. I had to be home at seven. I still have to go to the supermarket and I'm not, <laughs> it's not going to, <laughs> you are not going to be able to deliver your best. Right. I, I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, right. you're right. It's, 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 you know, I wish I wasn't, I wouldn't be in that situation, but you are. So you have to do, do everything yeah. to the best of your ability and accept it. Absolutely. You have, you have to be able to, uh, bring the distinguish, uh, the, the, it's a very clear, uh, perspective of, of what you can change and what you cannot change. What can you change? If you are, if your latest chronic, maybe you should take a look at your agenda and the way that you are managing it. Okay. If it's acute, I mean, if your agenda, everything is okay, but sometimes you get late, then you have to accept that you cannot change it. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to be able, if you want to deliver your best to your patient, you have to be able to ground yourself, to work from that place of presence and to deal with, 
uh, and to respond to the situation. So to bring a, an accurate response, a response that serves you better, that serves your patient better, that serves your work better, instead of working from this place of reactivity that can actually lead you to make more mistakes. I, I think that's great. And uh, I, the story that you said uh, about that, that gentleman who has it, uh, his quality of work has improved uh, since the COVID uh, is exactly, you know, you described me. And I know, I know loads of associates who usually will be there one hour after their clinical day has ended doing what? Guess what? Doing their notes, making sure the notes are correct and, and, and litigation proof and whatnot. But now that we're able to just have a bit more time to get the notes right, leaving on time, it's, it's been great. Uh, and, I, and I like the, the, you know, the, the point you raise about actually just being in the moment with your patient because we owe it to that patient. Even though we're running late, yeah. we owe it to that patient to, to give them our best. And I guess one thing I, I've always managed the way of running late is some people speed up, which I think is dangerous. And, you know, you lose being in the moment. I actually then purposely slow down so that patient doesn't sense that, hey, I'm rushing anything. And you know what? It actually works well for me. And I always say to patients that, look, one day it might be for you. I'll run late and I'll always do my best. And patients uh, can be understanding when you frame it like that. When you actually invite them in calmly, even though you're running late, they, they then... It's, it's infectious. They then also mm -hmm. become calm. So uh, yeah. I love all those points. Um, please, can you tell us if anyone wants to, because those are the three scenarios we covered really well, but if anyone wants to learn more, how can we find out more about your, you know, the courses that you offer, your Instagram page, uh, your blogs, that sort of stuff? Because I'm sure there are lots of colleagues who need more than just this 45 minute episode. They, they, they want to delve deeper because they really see the benefit this can have to their quality of life and work. Uh, so you can find me at Instagram at mindful.dentistry. And you can find my mindfulness-based stress reduction courses at my website, which is uh, mindfuldentistrytraining.com. Uh, and what I basically do is it's uh, eight weeks mindfulness-based stress reduction courses only with dentists, uh, either in group or one-to-one. Uh, -one. Um, but we cover all these uh, aspects of bringing awareness to actually your triggers, the way that you are reacting, um, how you can bring a, a, a more uh, accurate response and and so it's 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 an eight weeks process, but you need that time to be able to to well first again to be able to bring the awareness to what you are doing right because sometimes you're not even aware um, because I sometimes uh, talk to colleagues that complain about stress, but when I ask okay, but what is your actually stress? What's causing your stress? What are your triggers? How do you react to them? And they have no idea. So there's mm -hmm. this lack of awareness. The same way as when I ask at, at, uh, in the second session of the course, for example, I ask, uh, tell me uh, one good thing that happened in the clinic the last week, you know, uh, a thing that brought you joy, a thing that made you smile. And I have colleagues like, oh, oh yeah, I mean, if you ask me the negative, I can say, but the positive, mm -hmm. so there's this lack, you know, of awareness of or what you actually is going on in your daily work so during those eight weeks we 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 go through all that and and believe me it's uh it's a big change of of perspective and 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 it and it and it works so my offer is this uh mindfulness based stress reduction completely adapted to dentistry due to my to my to my background mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and you can find it at uh mindful dentistry training Dot com. Amazing. And uh, I hope some people are able to reach out to you to, to, to you know, gain some advice if they need. Uh, and again, you're very active on Instagram. So that's great. Uh, thank you for, for giving your time because one of the listeners, uh, Anish, if you're listening, I know you are, buddy. You wanted something about uh, stress reduction at work as well. Uh, so it's great that you're able to, to offer that because my, my podcast is very clinical, but I wanted to, to bring someone on to it. Actually, clinical dentistry is stressful. And I think the, the three scenarios you tackled today um, are, are golden, are, are really things that dentists can, can really benefit from. So I really appreciate you giving up your time to share those managing techniques with us. But one thing I want to leave everyone with as well is it's one thing to listen to an episode like this and, and have some information. And it's a totally other thing to apply it. Because what's going to yeah. happen the next time you're in a stressful situation is you might just forget this conversation, this what you heard. You actually have to 
be aware of it and actually implement it. So, uh, you know, for those listening, please do implement this, actually make it part of your regime. And I think that way you will gain so much more. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely true. And you actually, um, I mean, you can start applying this. Uh, you don't have to engage in a mindfulness course. You just have to um, give yourself the chance to pause you know, whenever you feel that you're about to, to react and whenever you feel you're about to getting into this autopilot, uh, mode, just, just reacting. So just take a deep breath and step, take a step back and give yourself the opportunity to respond. So that's what you can start applying. Amazing. Uh, Manuela, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you for the opportunity. It was lovely to, to talk to you. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. I told you she'd make it really powerful and impactful. And listen, if you gain from that, follow Manuela. It's mindful.dentistry on Instagram. And uh, please do, if you're listening on Apple, leave a review. I love reading the reviews and they mean so much to me. So if you found value from this, hit that subscribe button so you get all the updates for future episodes uh, and do leave a review where you can. And reach out to me on Instagram, on the Protrusive Dental uh, Instagram page and tell me what kind of content you want next. I'm always happy to serve. I also promised you a discount code. So Manuela uh, is running a program, Mindful Dentistry. I'm just going to find the details for you. So her website is uh, mindfuldentistrytraining.com uh, and she's offering any of the Protrusive Sorority a 25% discount with the code Protrusive. And it's basically Mindful Dentistry Training Course. So if you resonated with what Manuela had to say today, if you found a lot of value from it and you, and hopefully you feel uplifted after today, but if you just need a little bit more support, if you're in a bit of a tough situation and you think Manuela is the person to guide you through it, then uh, check her course out. Um, and like I said, this is not an affiliate program or anything. I just love that she's going to be able to help so many dentists. So check out uh, Manuela's content. Uh, I'll put it on the Protrusive website, protrusive.co.uk forward slash stress. And on that page, um, you'll be able to find Manuela's link and the reminder of the discount deal. So I'll catch you in the next episode, guys. Thank you so much again for listening all the way to the end.